it's great to be here. I was actually born in Boulder and lived here till I was nine, and then we've started moving around a lot. So this is my kind of my hometown too. And uh, I was working for the state government, um, uh, working on the flood recovery actually in um, emergency management. So we were handling the FEMA PA and the CDBG DR, and I was working with the um, the watershed grants, and that was my other program that I was managing. So I'm very familiar with everything that was going on and what what everybody's been doing here, um, and know a few of you from my time. Uh, at the state. So it's really cool to be back in this capacity and I'm just going to be backing up a few steps to actually just talk about the 100 Resilient Cities program and um, actually so um, Greg was speaking to how that's looking on the ground here and I'm just going to go through the program and you can just understand it a little bit better from a global scale. Okay, so 100 Resilient Cities. It's, um, it's a program of the Rockefeller Foundation. So the foundation actually has about four programs that it does um, about resilience. This is their biggest investment. We're about 45 people. We're based in New York City. Um, and it's a $160 million investment by the foundation over the course of, a, um, until it's funded until 2020. So this initiative was established by the foundation on its 100th birthday. It wanted to do some massive investment and do a cat really large scale global catalyt catalytic program. So it, want, it decided to choose 100 cities around the world to work in. Um, as Greg pointed out, we don't have all 100 yet. We have 67. Um, they wanted to invest at the level of city government because city governments um, in terms of government level are, can be the most effective in addressing the challenges we're facing in the 21st century. So challenges of urbanization, what cities are looking at in terms of climate change, social stretches, immigration, um, you know, refugees, uh, w water shortages. Um, so how can we support city governments to take these, these on uh, firsthand? Um, it's, it's also about shocks and stresses. So um, as Greg is finding out and we're, we're pointing out, it's, all, it's also about the way that um, this, the general stresses on society are contributing to the vulnerabilities of cities. So it's not just about a, a hurricane or an earthquake. It's also about what about poverty? What about lack of housing? And how are we going to address these? Um, so jumping into what makes a city resilient, what are we, what is the program trying to help cities do? So how are we, what are our aspirations for cities in this program? The first is for them to kind of optimize where they're operating. So by taking stock of their shocks and stresses, they can start to make investments today for a better future, but the, that benefit, you know, it, they benefit their systems immediately. So how do we, if we take stock now, looking at our shocks and stresses of the impacts, how can we start investing for our future? We don't need a disaster to figure that out. It's also not about layering on a whole new plan. Um, this is about taking the resources and reorganization. We talk a lot about reorgan reorganizing cities. How do we reorganize government to be, be, um, behave differently around, to um, create resilience in the city? And then we try to support cities by creating somewhat of a value system and a lens for them to start examining how they're operating. So we try to provide some support through these clumsy Excel tools <laughs> for them to start looking at their systems and say, how can we do things differently? Um, there's two key problems that the program sees in cities. One is that they're complex but siloed ecosystems, both inside themselves and also the city government inside the larger city ecosystem. But also that if we have 100 cities, how can we find solutions that scale and how can we share globally? We don't know if that's working yet, actually. Um, we're finding out that it's actually a little bit more complicated than that. Um, but we provide four different kinds of resources to the cities to try to figure this out. The first two really contribute to the city um, doing its understanding on its own. <laughs> The first is the chief resilience officer. Um, this person is going is leading the charge and has, has a very difficult position in taking on some of the political realities of the silos inside the city to be a little bit of a disruptor and start to um, so to make connections both inside and outside the city. It's really critical to build the networks to build resilience outside the city as well. They reach out from city government. That's not a traditional role from inside city government, or maybe it's a token role. This is a big, big part of our program, and it's very challenging. Um, the second is to create a strategy, um, a strategy for the city. So that's a little bit, that's Greg's in the middle of this process with the partners. And this is um, essentially a set of priorities that the city is going to take on once identified through a lot of working groups and outreach and partnerships um, that will identify a few things the city is going to do in essentially the second to third year of the grant program, the actions they're going to take. So we only have three cities that have really finished these, I think, at this point. So it's New Orleans, Norfolk, and then New York. Um, but you can actually see what these strategies look like. 
Uh, the third is the platform partners. <laughs> Thank you, Shidi, for everything. Um, really critical. So once the strategy has been developed and the priority area is identified, the city can, is offered support through a lot of these technical partners to actually try to do a, a couple of things. So this is the active part of the grant. It's not typical philanthropy. We're really giving them resources and requiring them to implement and test on the ground a lot of these things that they say they want to do. Um, I love this slide because it's it also says Ushahidi has some um, says it's important for them too. So hopefully our platform's benefiting. And I haven't talked at all about um, the way that we're engaging with the private sector around this and building a practice. But um, I think the most critical part is just the network. And this has been the most powerful part of our entire, entire program where we have 100 cities sharing ideas around the world. Um, so we have 67, 33 will be in the first quarter, and then um, we're able to convene this group periodically to be able to share solutions. And it's an incredible, incredible experience to see everybody working together and everybody going through so the CROs aren't alone. Um, so overall, we're just trying to, we're working to catalyze a large practice around the world through 100 cities identifying their needs, aggregating them, saying to the market, we need solutions, we need innovations, bringing those tools to other cities and then creating a whole practice. And that's the program. Thank you. <laughs>